I didn't know Amy that well uh, when, when we first discussed her. I got a chance to see a little bit of her work, and I was so impressed how much she gives without a word. Uh, it's, a, it's something that we forget a lot. Uh, you know, we always think about what are they saying, what are they, how they communicate. Well, you can communicate a ton in a nod in your eyes, and she is unbelievable in it. One of my favorite scenes in the movie, when she's confronted with this horrible, like, what am I going to do with this thing? Watching that character struggle with it, she doesn't even say, she's, it's just an amazing moment. Jeté, it's always hard to pin your hopes on a child actor. Uh, there are plenty of movies, and I've worked on a couple of them, where it was a good try, but not good enough. And the movie will fall apart without that character really being strong and also being believably evil, which is tough for a girl of that age. So she did a fantastic job of both playing the sweet daughter and also playing the malevolent force that she becomes. They don't say a lot, so they're super cute, which is what their job is to be, and they are a little bit like the lamb sitting in the middle of all these uh, predators, and uh, will the lamb survive or not? When we were debating what church should look like and how you should feel, et cetera, we went back to, I think it was the original book cover, um, and we looked a lot at that cat. And in a way, that's what we were drawing off of as we looked at the different cats that we looked at. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get, especially with cats, but animal training is always a little bit difficult. So in this case, we had five churches that, that all did different things, which is kind of cool. And from a story point of view, though, church is a really beloved figure. It's really interesting to me because obviously he can't say anything. He can't participate on certain levels. but. People seem to just really respond to the idea of a cat having something that's not just right and to going to, oh my God, it's completely dangerous. And the audience loves the character. I think it's always interesting to work with directors when they work in a team because it's, it, it, you think of it as such a single job. And the idea that somebody's going to split it up is always like, really, how does that work exactly? So uh, usually one person's a little more talkative than the other, in my experience, and that person is the one who sort of takes the lead in the sense of communication. But what's interesting is if you talk to Kevin about something, he has a very different insight than Dennis. Not better or worse, just different. And so, you know, you could see uh, them exploring one thing, and then it would change a little bit, and it would explore another which represented one or the other's slightly different thought. And I think uh, that can be dangerous because it can feel indecisive, but in this case, it was within a very small parameter of the difference. Thematically, what I find so interesting about the book and, and both movies is you can't run from death. It's going to find you. So you can't hide from the concept. It's going to either find you or it's going to find somebody near and dear to you. I think everybody has a different definition of what's a great horror film. For me, it's the what's not there that makes it for me. I'm not the biggest fan of slasher movies, for instance, because everything's there on the screen. The blood, the knife, the evil thing. I, I like the unknown. Unknown is more terrifying to me. I think what's interesting is, is that the book and the movie, I don't think the terrifying is... Ex it is wildly discomforting. On an emotional level, it puts you in really uncomfortable positions. So I, I kind of felt the first time I saw the movie, I was just sort of like, I found myself really crunched in. It wasn't necessarily terrifying. It was just the dread. I would say dread is this movie's uh, and this book's strength, is just how awful it is and how you can feel the worst news coming, you know, the worse and worse and worse. And so you just really you get to that point where you can't take it in a way, and then that's the moment where the movie just accelerates. Steven has the ability to shine a light in a corner where you really don't want to go. I think he he's very unafraid. It's, it's, um, it's very decisive in terms of what he's exploring. Now, I don't know how his process works. For him, it might be a process of discovery, but as a reader, it's a process of 
journey into dark, unknown, uh, weird places sometimes, you know, and he seems to have that ability to shine a light in the corner where you really didn't want to go.